Welcome back to the fifth installment in the Jazz Piano Core series. Today we're going to talk about a concept called secondary dominance, in my opinion probably the most interesting and useful trick in the bag of tricks of jazz piano harmony, uh, and harmony in general, and we'll just ju jump straight into it. And <clears throat> we're going to start with a simple melody, and we're going to harmonize it. Uh, I've picked sort of a, a folk-sounding Irish melody, I guess, which goes like this. Now, as discussed in previous videos, the first step in harmonizing a melody is picking the, or trying to harmonize it with the three most important degrees of the scale you're in. We're currently uh, in the C major scale, and those would be the tonic, subdominant and dominant. In our case, C major seventh, F major seventh, and G dominant seventh. So maybe I would play something like this. Again, there's more than one correct solution, but probably most of the ways you choose would sound maybe along these lines. The next step is to use chord substitutions. And we've discussed that, for example, the one can be substituted, <coughs> sorry, substituted for the three minor or the six minor, the four can be substituted for the two minor, and the five uh, can be substituted for the diminished seventh. Uh, actually, well, <coughs> if you're playing a tri, that would be diminished. If you're playing a four letter a four note chord that would be a half diminished chord all right so using these substitutions we might play something like this again there's more than one way to reharmonize it but i'm going to pick just one of them So I didn't really make any big changes, I just added uh, one substitution there where I substituted the C major 7th for an A minor 7th. You could do more, you could do less, you could actually not have any substitution at all. It's really up to you. I really put it in there because I'm going to use it for a demonstration uh, in a bit. Now we come to the idea of this lesson, that is the secondary dominance. And the idea is the following. Suppose you're playing, say, in the key of C major. And one of the chords you're landing on is the subdominant. So that would be an F major seventh chord. Now, just for a moment, you can think of it as if you're in the key of F major and you're playing the tonic. And you'd like to lead into this tonic by playing the dominant in this key. So in the key of F major, if you were to construct it, the dominant degree, the fifth degree, would be a C, a C dominant seventh, right? Because you would have a C dominant seventh leading into an F major seventh, a dominant, a dominant fifth degree leading into the tonic. And this means that momentarily, even when you're playing in the key of C major, you can insert this C dominant 7th in there before an F major 7th chord. So instead of playing, you might play You see I've added this C dominant 7th chord in there. 
It's not always going to work, it's not always going to sound good, but there's usually a very good chance that it will fit in very well with the progression you're, you're playing. Let's take another example. Let's take, uh, suppose you're playing a... So a simple sort of riff in the right hand, and in the left hand, in the key of C major, you're playing C major 7th, uh, G dominant 7th, and C major 7th. Now, again, you can momentarily think when you're playing the G chord that you're in the key of G major, uh, and you can ask what is my dominant in this degree. That would be the, the D, that's the fifth degree. And this means whenever you see a G chord, a G major chord, in any of its variations, you can put in a D dominant seventh chord before it. Or at least you can try to put in. And then it would sound like this. So instead of playing, you would play So you see I've put in a D dominant 7th chord here, and then play the G dominant 7th, then back to C. So it's almost as if you're momentarily going out of key and then back into key. Some people prefer to think of it this way, some people just prefer to think of it as creating dissonance. Uh, it's really a matter of taste of how you view this instrument. Having explained it, let's go back to our sort of melody and reharmonize it using this uh, trick. This, by the way, works for minor chords as well. If you're playing an A minor, so we've discussed minor scales. You know that the, the, you, the chord leading into the A minor, the dominant chord, would be a, an E uh, dominant seventh then going into an A minor 7th, if you're in the key of A harmonic minor. So you can use the exact same trick working with minor chords. So going back to our melody, let's try to add the secondary dominance in there and see what sort of effect they have on the sound. So this is the first part and we could instead play So I've <clears throat> marked on the screen those places where I used secondary dominance. And in the end, I actually made a little shift. I, I cheated just a little bit, where what I've done is basically uh, taken, I've omitted the uh, F major seventh chord from the final block, and I've actually used two secondary dominance. That is, I was going, I knew I was going to play a G, and I said, let's lead into it with a its secondary dominant. But then I said, let me lead into this secondary dominant with its own secondary dominant. So the secondary dominant of a D is an A, dominant seventh. And you can actually do the secondary dominant of the secondary dominant of the secondary dominant and you can keep building this idea, at some point it just becomes too much. So people don't use these uh, double or triple or quadruple secondary dominance that much. But you do encounter it at some places, uh, and you can think of some progressions as actually doing exactly that. It's a really cool idea, I hope you've had uh, an interesting time learning it, and I urge you to go ahead and try to harmonize or reharmonize some of, you know, some simple melodies using this trick. And I'll see you next time.